Thanks to Direct Line for Business. Today we're looking at new legislation for landlords. In April there will be a 3% increase in stamp duty for buy-to-let landlords. And property expert Kate Faulkner is here to look at this further. So why why has this change come about, Kate? Um, well, there's a couple of reasons, actually. The first... And then secondly, politically, there is a lot of pressure um, on government at the moment to make sure there is a better uh, waiting, if you like, between homeowners, so people trying to buy one home when we're short of stock, as opposed to people going and buying lots of homes, um, uh, which is typical when, when people go into buy to let. So um, it's kind of a bit of a double whammy. What we're seeing here is um, almost trying to persuade people not to invest quite so much in property, maybe look at other things and, and make those more tax efficient for people um, but on the other hand mean that you know when a first-time buyer goes to buy a property they don't have to pay anywhere near as much tax as somebody who's getting their second or third okay so who's just spell out precisely who's going to be affected well to, to spell it out precisely the document that came out yesterday was 29 pages wow. long so effectively it's actually a tax on having and owning a second home over and above the residential property that you live in okay so Anything that is classed, so it might be, for example, you live in a residential home and you want to buy a property for your kids who are going to university. So that can be classed as a, a second home and the charge will apply. Mm. Uh, Accidental landlord. Ah, well, I, I find that ranges anything between sort of... 20% of the market and about 95% having met them. So typically an accidental landlord is classed as somebody um, that is letting a property not necessarily through choice. So for example, it could be um, a couple who have split up and they have, uh, they've decided to let their home, for example. Uh -huh. Yeah. And they've gone somewhere else. So or a couple we, that got together. Yeah, yeah, together. absolutely. Yeah. That was a great one, and yeah. that's almost where Buy to Let originally started. So um, a lot of people got together in the 90s, couldn't sell the property, the last recession that we had, and so um, they decided to let that out, and that's that's really where the birth of Buy to Let was here for your individual landlord. So accidental landlord, it's not my favourite phrase, I have to say, but it is important to understand because I think often we think of landlords as just people who are buying houses and they're letting it out and they're making all of this money. If you think about the global world we live in, and I used to work in relocation, a lot of people now let out the property they, they own and they've lived in, and then they let in the new area that they're temporarily being moved to. So what does this mean for landlords? Well, it is, certainly in London, it means you're going to be paying thousands and thousands mm. of extra pounds um, to the government um, from a stamp duty perspective. So just to give some sort of figures on that, which I think are helpful, up to £125,000, if you're a homeowner um, and you buy a property for that amount, you pay no stamp duty. But if you are a buying and deemed to buy a second home um, under these rules, you will pay 3% on that 125000 Now, if you're a homeowner and you buy £250,000, you would pay 2% on everything over and above 125000 to two fifty, but you pay 5% now. So on a hundred on a sort of two hundred and fifty thousand pound home, then if it's your residential home you'd pay about two and a half thousand pounds stamp duty. As a second home owner you'd be paying ten thousand. Okay. How do landlords uh, make sure they're up to date on all this? For landlords, for me, um, probably up until a few years ago, there are ways and means that you could keep up to date with um, landlord rules and regulations yourself. Over the last few years, I don't think I have seen um, such a burst of legislative changes. And it's not just the changes, it's how they're implemented that is really complex and then ongoing changes. And then no so, landlords get caught because they don't know. Yeah, it's you don't know what you don't know you don't know and that's what gets landlords into trouble. So for me, you must be a member, I, I think, of a landlord association, yep. which might be your local authority or somebody like the RLA, mm. or indeed use a letting agent, and bearing in mind they're not regulated, who keeps up with the law. Typically they're RICs, NALs or ARL are registered and that is crucial. Yep. A lot of lating agents out there do not necessarily keep up with the law. OK. Thanks to Direct Line for Business. For more information and for the chance to win a tech bundle, go to lbc.co.uk.